So as soon as I sat down and started the unboxing, my upstairs neighbor decided to come out to the balcony and she wanted some plant advice and just some chit chat. she decided to clean her balcony so then I decided that I'm not going to be the crazy lady talking to herself and in English so I went to my balcony but my neighbors were also on their balcony because it's extremely uh, warm and humid lately we are having 30 degrees and 200% humidity and I was losing light so I ended up in the kitchen instead. So I've been wanting to make this order from Hellenic Orchids for a while now and I was hoping that my first order would be an orchid because they are specializing in orchids but instead me and my friend Rea decided that we both wanted to get a Trigirtis for Mozana instead. So I got two plants, but they're the same species. I haven't opened the other one just yet because it's not mine, it's Rea's. Hopefully we'll meet soon and I can give her the plant. I decided to keep the one with the most already open blooms. This order was shipped to me um, on Monday afternoon and it was here in less than 24 hours. It came from Trikala, which is right in the middle of Greece, at least mainland Greece. It's as fresh as it could possibly be and it doesn't seem to be affected by the journey. It is pretty root bound, as you can see. So I have to repot it pretty soon. I'm pretty happy about it. I think I'm going to be watering this daily, at least until the temperatures uh, cool down a bit. So this is the plant. And this is a Trichirtis formosana or a Trichirtis formosana. Yeah. And although I usually go for the ecclesiastical Latin pronunciation because it resembles the modern Italian more. This time I'll go with the classical Latin pronunciation which is Trichirtis because it sounds exactly like the ancient Greek uh, word from which it derives. But more on the etymology later. For now I would like to tell you a few things about this cutie. So, first of all, this is not an orchid. Trichirtis is a genus of approximately 20 species, although only two of them are commonly cultivated in gardens. Trichirtis formosana and Trichirtis hirta. This genus has been under revision from many, many scientists for many decades. Trichirtis has been placed in various plant families, including Uvulariace, Calohortace, Convalariace, and its own family Trichirtidace. But most scientists now place it in the family Liliace or the Lily family, hence the common name Toad Lily. It is hardy in zones 5 through 9. This particular species is native in Eastern Asia, especially Taiwan, and it grows in humid subtropical forests with plenty of rainfall. It's a herbaceous perennial Rhizomatus 
and deciduous plant. It will lose its foliage during the colder months and it will sprout back up as soon as the weather warms up in spring. It blooms with these tiny star-shaped orchid-like flowers which are white and heavily spotted with purple dots as you can probably tell and it's one of the few shade-loving plants so it will be happy in a part shade to full shade position in your garden and although once established it can tolerate some drought it needs to be consistently moist and you should not let the soil dry out completely or you might lose this one it can grow up to 90 centimeters or 3 feet tall and 60 centimeters or 2 feet wide. It grows by creeping rhizomes and it can naturalize forming dense colonies without being invasive. You can propagate this by seed or by division every 3 to 4 years in early spring. It is pretty disease resistant and low maintenance, although slugs and snails may be a problem for this one. So keep an eye for these rascals. It prefers a slightly acidic to neutral soil and you should be keeping this consistently moist as I mentioned already, but the soil must be light and airy. Its common name is toad lily, hence the toad and it's probably because the spotted flowers resemble the skin, the spotted skin of some toad species. Maybe, don't get me wrong, I do love toads but I don't know, I don't like the common name as much. The Japanese have a much much better name for it. It is called Hototogisu, which means little cuckoo and it's probably because this plant reminds them of the shy little birdie with the same name. I've never seen a Hototogisu before, so I'm not sure. I always prefer the scientific names anyway. As for the etymology, Trikirtis derives from two ancient and modern Greek words, the prefix tri or tris which means three or three times, which is the same both in Latin and in English. And the adjective kirtos, kirti, and kirtom, which means humped, bended, or arched, in reference to the three sac-like swollen nectaries at the base of the tepals, which I have no idea where these are, probably here. And the specific epithet formosana, it's New Latin and it means from Taiwan because Taiwan was named in 1544 as Ilha Formosa by the first Portuguese explorers, which means beautiful island. And although it's not used today, you can find it in some sort of poetic form. The word formosa is actually a Latin adjective, formosus, formosa, formosum, and it's a compound adjective from the noun forma, which means shape, and the adjectival suffix osus, osa, osum, which means full of. So it loosely translates into beautifully formed or full of form, full of essence perhaps. The description of this species is attributed to John Gilbert Baker, an English botanist and employee at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. He is very well known for his numerous publications and a lot of plant species are named in his honor. Trikirtis has a very interesting story when it comes to being cultivated and introduced to Europe and the US. So bear with me and follow me on this journey. It is assumed that it was widely cultivated in Japan, but unfortunately we have no documentation of that. The first European who probably documented the genus was the Swedish 
botanist and naturalist Carl Pieter Thunberg in his book Flora Japonica in 1784. Although he did not collect the plant, he called a plant Uvularia hirta, but there was no description of the flowers. It is widely believed that it was a Trichirtis hirta. Forty years later, in 1824, Nathaniel Velich, a Danish surgeon, botanist and explorer, collected and described Trichirtis pilosa, incorrectly assuming that it was the same plant described by Carl Pieter Thunberg. He also named the new genus Trichirtis, after the plant's unusual nectaries. 24 years later, in 1850, Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker, a great British botanist and explorer, who also happened to be Charles Darwin's best friend, during an exploration of East Asia, collected Velich's plant Trichirtis pilosa and sent seeds to his father, Sir William Jackson Hooker, who was then the director of Kew Gardens, who he later wrote the first article regarding the cultivation of Trichirtis in Europe. In the 1860s, Robert Fortune, a Scottish botanist and explorer, found Thunberg's Uvularia hirta and recognized its relation to Velich's Trichirtis pilosa. He sent seeds to an English nursery, thus began the cultivation of the species in Europe. In 1863, Sir William Jackson Hooker described and reclassified Uvularia hirta as Trichirtis hirta, declaring it as a separate species from Trichitis pilosa. By the 1890s, was cultivated in New Zealand and it was in cultivation in the US, in a Massachusetts garden where it was proved hardy and was widely cultivated. New species are still discovered and taxonomists revise the entire genus by dividing species and subspecies. I think the last species of Trichirtis was discovered in 2007. I do hope you've enjoyed the video and all of those nerdy info. And until next time, keep on dreaming. Bye! Μπράβο. Όχι, γιατί τι έβγαλε. Βάλε σε ένα λίτρο νερό, βάλε λίγο ενόπνευμα και λίγε σταγόνε σε σαπούνι πιάτων ή χεριών. Και πιστε... Κάτω, κάτω, δεν θα χάσει τίποτα. Και... Ναι, το ίδιο είναι, βαμβακάδα πρέπει να είναι. Αλλά καλό είναι να μην ρίχνει χημικά γιατί συνηθίζουν και γίνονται ανεκτικά. Ναι, ο, να τα προλαβαίνεις με ενόπνευμα και σαπούνι. Καλύτερα γιατί μετά έχουν αντίσταση και δεν θα, κατα... θα τους βάζεις χημικά και δεν θα καταλαβαίνουν.